Good morning. Morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you had a nice Mother's Day. Happy Mother's I, Day. Did you have a nice Mother's Day? I had Day? a lovely Mother's Day. Oh, I got beautiful cards from my girls that wrote things that made me cry my eyes out. I haven't read them yet. Got some lovely flowers and then we had a nice lunch, didn't we? Aww. With Dina. And it was lovely. It was really lovely. It was really, really nice. Uh, really lovely food as well. Yeah. Um, did you have a nice Mother's Day, guys? Or did you have a shit Mother's Day? It's all right to have had a shit one. Or maybe it was a day which was a bit painful for yeah. various reasons. You know, obviously, it's uh, it's not necessarily you might have a horrible mum. And that's, yeah. you know, and that's that really complicates these things, doesn't it? If you've it? got a horrible mum or a horrible parent, go to myhorridparent.com. There you go. <laughs> it's just because Davina always says about it, and I've sent other people there, and they've said, "Oh, actually, it was really helpful that oh, right. my horrid parents." Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you feel like you're the mad one. Julie says she had a boring and sad Mother's Day. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, to sweetheart. Hear that. Sweet yeah, um, we did. We were thinking of that all day, weren't we? Yeah, on we and really off, were, really thinking were. about our friends. Like in the morning, I, I texted all my friends that have lost their mums, and just you know, gave them a little individual message about that. Yeah. And then, of course, I was thinking of all the mothers in Gaza. And so it was a, it was a day that was tinged with sadness for mm. me and mm. also for me personally, huge gratitude. Every single thing I was going, oh, my God, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I spoke to my mum and dad out in Jordan, which was really nice. Yeah, I didn't see them. How are they? They were hilarious. Were they? Absolutely hilarious. But the sun was shining. Don't forget, they're 10 minutes from the West Bank where they are. So you can see across to Israel. Have you told them what the weather is like here? Yeah, mm -hmm. I told them what the weather's like here. And they and it was like early evening there and the sun was just pouring in. My dad looked like a golden angel. Wow. Of course, ever the actor, he had the best light. No <laughs> Uh, Claire Kendrick, struggle with Mother's Day. I'm not a mum and I lost my own mum 21 years ago. Kept myself busy making soup and me and my hubby and dog a roast dinner. But I, had, but I had the best mum. Oh, There's so you. many different ways that we mother as well, isn't there? I mean, yeah. you know, as like my friend Lisa, I was saying to her, and Kaz, you know, Kaz doesn't have any um, any kids. Oh, by the way, I'm doing a live with Kaz tonight at six o'clock on Instagram about drinking, about my drinking. Well, oh, Teresa Saunders, hang on a second. I, I, well, I was completely ignored, not even wished a happy Mother's Day. Then husband got mad at me because I was upset. Oh, no. You see, this is what I apparently, hate. Can I just say that on that note? A lot. Yeah, Teresa, just, Nadia mentioned that she said apparently some men or partners of women who are the mothers of their children will say to them, in terms of, you know, commemorating it, celebrating it, making a fuss of, of, of your partner, acknowledging it, saying nice things, being a bit softer, all this kind of normal stuff that you should probably do actually anyway. Um, but, you know, it, if they if they don't do that and a, and a mum says anything, they go, well, you're not my mum. Yeah. What a Lots fucking emotionally dense way to approach anything. So weird. And you wonder why your relationship might not have a spark. You've got to be nice. Yeah, but anyway, I said, to, I said to my friend Kaz, you know, you mother so many people. The only person I really let mother me is is Kaz when I go to her place in Brighton. Oh, yeah, good, she yes. like puts duvets on me. She gets things for me. I sit on the sofa. I feel so mothered by Kaz. Well, I she, love she's it so incredibly much. privileged because in she's... fact, part of the conversation we had yesterday morning was about how Nadia refuses to allow vulnerability in, which is okay. We can all sit there and say that's already kind of laudable. It's, it's seen as great, isn't it? Isn't it? If you don't cry, if you don't sleep, if you work hard. If you're all these things, you're somehow seen, I'm not saying that's how you say it, but we, there's this kind of cultural idea that, oh, then you must be a real state, you know, getting on with it. And just, that's a good thing. It's a virtue. Actually, no, it's not. Because what it no, does is, it is it removes the capacity of those around you to actually reach in. And I think, Nadia... Because it is you, a gift. You, you, to allow somebody to yeah, talk to you is a gift. gift. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you rarely give that gift. And um, I think that's great that, that the CAS can. So if you could do it a little bit more here. I think be it's more. because... Yeah, she's just got that way about. She's just cozy. Well, she overwhelms she's in a in a loving fashion. I must show her this little bit of this video. And slightly <laughs> because you're a control freak, Kaz. She won't let anyone here overwhelm her. So, so that, that, that there, there, there it is. Zoe Agnew, I find Mother's Day extremely hard, but felt grateful for all the amazing women I do have in my life and the loving Aww. woman I had in my grandmother. Um, bless you, yes, Zoe. Yes, exactly. You, like, there's usually somebody that's mothered you somewhere, isn't there, Zoe? And look what a damn fine woman you are ever evolving into and working so hard on yourself. So you're doing really well yeah. anyway, yeah. aren't you? Sorry, that's just the most awful. Just taste that. I don't want to. You've it just gone and said that's the most awful know, and then given it to me to drink it. Well, it, I don't want to drink it. It tastes like 
an oil grommy. <laughs> okay, well, keep it yourself then. I've got a very nice cup of tea going in. Thanks yeah, very much. I don't know whether that's. I don't know whether it's supposed to be the sort of horror and hell of a coffee that you're supposed to have or not. Anyway, of course, last night it was the Oscars. Um, we stayed up for a bit of it. Um, I kind of knew there were going to be no surprises in the winning categories, so it was absolutely no surprise to wake up and see um, uh, the. the People who won Oppenheimer winning seven seven Oscars. We're going to be doing an Oscar chat later. It will be in our showbiz series. So it'll be yeah. like all the glam and the clothes and the gossip and everything. Yeah. We're going to just yeah. so you get two shots of us today. Two wax of wonderfulness. Yes. Um, but one of the big stories I want to talk about today is we're going to talk about the royal family. We're going to talk about the Princess of Wales photo, family photo, the drama. We're going to work out what you think is going on. Yeah, we really what do you what think? You think. Uh, and I want to talk about the director, Jonathan Glazer, who uh, directed The Zone of Interest, um, and how rather remarkably... Well, well, we're going to save that. We'll tell you after. What's going right. Um, and then we're going to also ask, is your hangover the worst? Why? And if do you have a worse hangover than anyone else? And also Robert Downey Jr. Uh, we're briefly going to touch upon this. This is another aspect of the Oscars. But really it's about whether him being called out or a joke being made of his sobriety right at the beginning of the Oscar ceremony by Jimmy Kimmel uh, was appropriate at out of, you know, bad taste or what have you. So there we go. We're going to talk about those things. So let's talk about the photograph first. Because this went bonkers, didn't it? So this is a photograph that was released by the royal family uh, yesterday or the day before. Is it? Yeah. And I think this, you know, the very fact of this photo being published or, or released was that... Um, You're so right, Rosie. I've done it again. <laughs> what? Matching again. Oh. Well, black, I mean, that's quite generic. No, but isn't? it's not. You don't usually wear them anyway. Thanks. What is so weird? So this is the photo that was released over the weekend. And uh, yeah, you would think you'd look at it and you'd think nothing notable here. Another generic, very sweet. I didn't really even check into the story because I was like, what, what? Just well, no, like, no, I did. Because I thought, well, this is clearly them wanting to push away all of the conspiracy theories, the chatter, the thought that there's something much more profoundly wrong with Kate. So this was is. so this was and a this photo. Was put was out as by... a means to silence the public and the yeah. press and say this is a recent photograph. Yeah, by William, wasn't it? This is a photo that's been taken by William. Here you go. Everything's fine here. We want to put an end. And you know, do you remember last week I was saying, a couple of weeks ago, the thing is I think the royal family are trying this new way of being more transparent. Yeah. But I feel for them because in a way it's just making everything worse. <laughs> the When it was best for them was when they said nothing. But obviously too much is out of the bag now for that to continue and they need to be a modern, updated royal family. But everything that they do just creates more chatter. And so this photo's come out, and Mark was absolutely blown away by this story. Well, I didn't really get the point of it to begin with. I do Well, know. no, I'm not, I was blown away by it, not because we necessarily even know why yeah. the photo has been pulled. So anyway, photo it's agency. Unusual, well, what generally happens is a, 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 a sanctioned photograph like this will be fed out to the Associated Press, Getty Photos, um, Rex features, you know, photo agencies, and they will be given the license and the permission by the royal household to then subcontract those images out to publications and to, to sell use. them. Uh, not necessarily, just but they to, will license to, and control right. it. Um, I doubt it would be to, I don't think they would sell it in this instance. I don't think there'd be money necessarily. Yeah, but anyway, so the Associated Press, here we go, Getty Images and uh, the France French Press Agency, they issued something, and this was the part of the story that got me intrigued. This was the bit that got him going. They put out something called a kill um, a kill, the, a kill policy or a kill application, which is basically kill the photo. And when something like this happens, it's like literally, I think something similar happened. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I think the other time I, I seem to remember the phrase being used was around Princess Diana and an image potentially coming out of her in the crash. Right. It's the only other time I seem to remember that bit. And it just seems starkly... Really? Uh, you mind know, mind you, there's probably been many other times that we would There will have been, yeah. But yeah. So, yes, yeah, so there was but a... You can so, remember. Yes, yeah, yeah. so absolutely. So, and, and the idea was they wanted to kill the photograph, i.e. pull it from everywhere, remove it, contact all the photo editors um, of every single newspaper, of every single publication that you've sent this image out to. And, and of course, in this kind of social media age, that achieves absolutely nothing because Except the photo's everywhere and everyone's whip, now looking at yeah. it in extreme close-up. And now it's it's whipped up even more conspiracy theories. So I haven't really read one yet. Yeah. I keep looking and yeah. I keep we keep going, what do you think it is? What so, do you, yeah, I mean, so. the only thing that I think when I look at that photo is 
it looks a bit, it's a bit odd. Like his arms seem very long <laughs> down oh. her body, but maybe he's got very long arms. But here's the weird thing. So I'm going to show you a, a close up in a minute. So what they said was when, they, when he dug into it a bit more, they said there's some, there's a discrepancy with the young girl. What's her name? I don't know their names. Charlotte. Charlotte's right arm. Well, I mistook that to be the one right next. No, no, no. The right arm is the one right next to Kate. I thought, well, yes, I suppose it does. And then I started to look at her arm, and then I started to look at all the hands, and everything started to unravel. Peter to me, was a bit like, like a that. jumper. <laughs> when you look too closely at anything, nothing makes sense so, anymore. Suddenly, the boy whose head is on top of Kate's hands look like her hands. And she looks like she hasn't got any hands. Yeah. And the whole photo becomes more and more ridiculous yeah. the more you look at it. So, A, that could have been what happened. I don't believe the hand on the right is her hand. It's someone <laughs> else's hand. Yeah, that, where's that come from? Where's that hand come from? <laughs> could she reach all the way around there? Where's his legs? Wait, anyway, so what are It's the like things? when you see those Kardashian ones, don't they? And they're like, their bottom is over right. there. Yeah. And that's a, but what, what I, this is what I don't understand. Tamika Patterson is saying Kate is not in the picture. That's the amount of... It looks like the kids have been stuck on around her, but I would never have thought of that. If I'd seen just that photo, I'd have just accepted it. So what interests me is these press people must get so many photos that they bloody know are a bit doctored and they let them through. Well, Why are they not with the this? Kardashian, they want to whip the up the story further. The are having an extra hand, aren't they, in the back yeah. of shot or To whip the up back. the story further. Uh, this is what I think happens. Go for it. Tell us. What do you think? Right. This is what I've settled upon. If this is a doctored photo by William, if I reckon he's gone, right, get yourself out of bed. You know, you're nearly there now. She's fine. I think she's fine. And um, he said, we've got to do a photo. And she says, I am not, I'm having the full six weeks off. So bugger off, ski matey. And so he's gone, oh. See, see when you look at him, he looks like his arms are growing out of a shoulder. But, but I do think whenever you look at a photo for too long, like you say, everything discombobulates. So anyway, efforts to shut down the drama have backfired. One of the things that the independence home did on is this. What? Well, you can see there where her what? hand doesn't... Well, part of the jumper's missing. Then there's a bit of the jumper at the bottom. It's clearly been filled in. The I hand... do not think her jumper's a bit ripped, a bit nibbled. <laughs> My Jasper, she wouldn't have a nibbled jumper. I don't think she's... See, all our that. jumpers are like yeah. I don't think she's got a nibbled jumper. <laughs> oh, I just think it's... I, here's what I think's happened here. What they shouldn't have done is have suddenly pulled the photo down because in this day and age, you can't pull a photo down anyway. You know, now it's out, it's out, it's there. Thing so, is, Neve, it's, it's not at this point, it's not a conspiracy now because the problem is that it is actually proven to be fiddled with, isn't it? And the, the palace are now refusing to make a comment. So. It's just, this is this is unravelling as badly as, as, what's the girl's name? Catherine's. Kate, what's, the, yeah. Kate, what's the little girl's? Charlotte. It's as unravelling as badly as Charlotte's cuffs. cuffs. I think Kate has said, bugger off, I'm having a full six weeks. I and he's gone, oh, shit, I've got to put a photo. No, up. Prince William said, have you seen... She, someone in the household has gone on Twitter and they've gone, fucking hell, Mum, what's all this bollocks they're all talking about? They keep saying you've been abducted by aliens. <laughs> they've all gone, oh, let's just cobble something together. Yeah. Someone said, oh, well, we've got this photo we haven't used, the kids and there's her. I feel like I've seen that photo before. I feel like I've seen but that photo But they're always before. like that, aren't they, royal photos? They all look the same. Creator Holic says everyone fiddles with photos. Doesn't mean anything is going on. But why have they issued a kill notice? Why have they then pulled the photo? And why have the royal house because gone into Because I think lockdown? it's the media feeding themselves. They know by doing a kill, it's going to whip up. They're going to get loads of column inches out of this. Yeah, I think it's. I think it. I think it's. It, it's. I'm trying to work out what Lee Pitt. What does this mean? Hi, Lee. I hope you well. I would have rather seen the back of Kate to see her new BBL. So oh, what's a BBL? But it's when you have an extra buttock put in. Oh, <laughs> that, that's the rumor. Of oh, her she's operation. had a Brazilian butt lift. Oh, that's oh, look at you suddenly tripped off the tongue. Didn't know what it was a second <laughs> ago. That's what Kim's had with a bottle of champagne. On well, the she refutes all no. of that and has a scan, has had a scan to show there's nothing. Hang in on buttocks a minute, except buttocks. There is not just buttocks. Well, that's what buttocks. she says. She had a scan, she showed everyone the scan. There is who's the one in that real housewives who's got more buttocks than. Yeah, but she knows she's had a buttock. No, she, she hasn't admitted it. it. Oh, no, she hasn't. No, she hasn't. Right. Even though those buttocks leave a room half an well, hour Well, she's after Kim's her. friend. 
Expert. All the same buttocks. I'd be disappointed she was Kim Sweeney. Two cheeks of the same backside, to quote George Galloway. I think that's his greatest. Right, we better move on because we're not going to have time for it. Uh, so who, who the god? Know, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows what's we going? We don't know. So has she had a, a Brazilian bum lift? No. Yeah. Of course oh, she bloody hasn't, you oh, idiot. Right. I don't know whether this was some kind of insider gossip. We're talking about the rumoured conspiracy, ridiculous stories that have come out of her, just clearly going and have a bit in a woman's thing. Say all those words in a different <laughs> order, please. She's just, she's obviously had something, I don't know, like, you know, she's something with her ovaries or a womb, you right, know, and you yeah. have to have downtime. Maybe she's just it. got, what's that thing where you get painful periods? Endometriosis. Maybe a bit of endometriosis. I don't mean a bit of I didn't, I didn't mean, as I said down. that. Just get out, has... of the, get out of the female pelvic zone because you're <laughs> going to cause yourself shit. I need to get back to the BBL. No, I get around the back again. Oh, um, Okay. So that's Kate, Kate Middleton. Uh, I think it's a uh, oh Katrina Cotton. Um, exactly. Who knows? New cares, but it's a nice distraction from serious news. News. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. Ellen. Absolutely. It is. It's a little bit of just like ha ha ha. Could be her bowels, says Jackie Molina. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. We don't know. We don't know. But anyway, uh, one thing's for sure: the royal household has created more of a problem. For They're itself. not doing well with their new PR b- b- plan. Not at all. They need to retreat. You either give all the information or, or none of the information. Exactly. Okay, um, I want to talk about briefly two aspects of the Oscars from last night. Um, this is obviously, we're gonna, as, as we said earlier, we're going to talk about um, uh, Oppenheimer, we're going to talk about Emma Stone, we're going to talk about Dav- Davine, Divine. But Divine we're mostly Do- going to do that in our show. Yeah, this but I'm just literally saying a sentence. I'm just saying a sentence. Right, carry on, carry on. We're going to be talking about all that in a bit, but the big, 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 big news, which I think is so shocking that you may not have even heard about this, is that the Best International Picture category, which rarely gets much of a look in, it's usually where, obviously, foreign language films, etc., cetera, uh, go. Um, and this foreign language, this film is in the German language, but it's produced by and directed by a British team. So it's a Yay, British film. A British film. Won yeah. an Oscar. So it was such re- amazing news. It's such amazing news. But Reese, if you're in the room, as we all know, most films are never won that national. They're, they're an amalgamation of so many different countries. But principally, it's a British film. And it won Best International feature it's never happened before we've never won best international picture before now of course chris nolan british oppenheimer principally british kind of you know irish cast with killian murphy and uh, british with emily blunt etc so yeah i get it we, we all knew oppenheimer was going to win but the so big... it was a bit like we knew it, it yeah, i wasn't it, excited to be honest which with you, is unfair it's, on them it because... is unfair on them yeah. that's why i went to bed though <laughs> um, but Jonathan Glazer, he's he's known for he's not a, he doesn't he's not a public spokesperson. He's a director. He's taken ten years between films. He remarkably made films like Sexy Beast, which we saw only recently again, sensational Ray Winston film, gangster movie. He did Under the Skin, the deepest, most deep, deeply unsettling sci-fi horror type film with uh, Scarlett Johansson. Um, And this is a much talked about film about the atrocities of Auschwitz told through the lens of the guy who essentially managed Auschwitz, managed the death of uh, millions, millions of Jewish people. And it tells the story of Auschwitz without showing you a single thing. It's all done on the soundtrack. It's all done in sound uh, through the the creation of an incredible soundscape, if you like. Um, And anyway, so Jonathan Glazer won this. Now, when I did the review and I did the original trailer reaction to this, I said, I sincerely hope that this this film has the possibility or the potential to do a really important thing here with the Gaza-Israel crisis. It could, on the one hand, throw an important spotlight over a part of our history we should never forget, the Holocaust, and at the same time, draw parallels uh, that we could learn from, draw parallels between (coughs) that event and what is going on now. Now, as a non-Jewish person saying that, one always feels like you're tiptoeing around incredibly sensitive Things. I was coming from a filmic perspective, I was coming from a humanitarian perspective, I was coming from a place of shared humanity. And so it was hugely important that Jonathan Glazer last night, who is a Jewish filmmaker, he himself said he refuted his own Jewishness due to the atrocities that are ongoing in the occupation of Gaza. He, he paid reference to the hostages and the uh, atrocities the of October the 7th. <clears throat> and he drew attention to the equivalent, if not uh, far sort of exceeding atrocities of what Israel has done in Gaza since. And I think for a Jewish filmmaker to stand up, having made a film about the Holocaust in the middle of Hollywood, when everyone else at that event 
may have worn a very tiny little badge that so. virtually no one could see. <clears throat> and he stood there not comfortable with being on stage. He was incredibly nervous. I he saw... was shaking and he had his head down and he used that platform for something really meaningful and make no bones about it. That was so unbelievably brave to do that because <laughs> why did no other single person speak out? Because there will have been people in that audience that are aware that there is an ongoing genocide and they didn't say anything. Some people wore tiny, tiny little pins and, <clears throat> you know, they're fearful for their careers. And I understand that. I do understand that. And I sympathise with that. But it's not something we just should just keep I, 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 you just know, saying this is the way that it is. We should challenge that. Why should people be? It's wrong that people are scared of losing their careers for talking out to try and stop the continued slaughter of tens of thousands of people. People's jobs are, you know. This I mean, is this is equivalent, and I'm going to say it as it is. This is equivalent to the McCarthy trials um, back in, you know, the, the height of the Cold this War. It's very similar, not equivalent. Well, no, but there is a huge equivalence in that huge swathes yeah. of Hollywood don't feel they can talk about certain <clears> things <throat> for fear of the consequences uh, with their careers, with their job prospects, casting. I, we I, know, you know a number of people yeah. who have been dropped by their agents mm. um, out in America just for just for liking posts. Yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, and also it's not as if everyone at the event couldn't have been aware because there was a huge demonstration, pro-Palestine or free Palestine demonstration in, in on the streets outside, which delayed delayed. Mm -hmm. delayed the actual start of it. I just want to quickly read you what he said. He said, all our choices are made to reflect and confront us in the present. This is the director of the zone of interest. Not to say, look what they did then, but rather look what we do now. Our film shows where dehumanization leads at its worst. I have to say, this is what I kind of mentioned in the review and I thought, oh God, I'm going to get... We're going to get kickback on this. Let's hope Jonathan Glazer feels the same. Um, he said, right now we stand here as men who refute their <coughs> Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people whether the victims of October the 7th in Israel or the ongoing attack in Gaza. What he says there is so significant. Oh. Rehear re that. We refute our Jewishness. He despises and calls out the use of the Holocaust as a, an emotive rationale and justification for what he calls an occupation, and he cites the occupation as leading to the events of October the 7th and the ongoing attack in Gaza. He names the continuum of it all. He doesn't pretend it started on one day. He doesn't pretend that the conflict and the problem in Palestine started in series four. He acknowledges the his This is a Jewish director. This has picked up zero coverage zero relative coverage. to everything zero. else. This has picked up zero coverage. I was listening to LBC this morning. What is the name of that guy who I now cannot oh, abide? God. Thomas Swarbrick. Swarbrick. They pull in the news. They talk about all the winners. They don't even mention this award. They didn't mention it. They don't even mention it. When So that just goes to show you why Hollywood and I, why I sympathise, why I do, I understand why nobody is putting their head above the parapet because they get, it affects their careers. But how can so many stand by when good men and women stand by and say nothing, appalling things happen? And the fact that that part, British, very big part of that film is made, is a British made film and, and our media don't feel that that is necessary to, to celebrate because he, because he spoke out and it's his film. The he's first Jewish. time, hang on, and the, he's Jewish, he's British. It's the first time we've ever won in this category. And here's the other thing. How many times in the not too far past has there been, say, a film which is American, but because a guy called Barry worked in the sort of props department yeah. to the left, further down the way. It's heralded as a British night, a, a victory for British cinema. The nights of British cinema victory when there wasn't really any, and we win this award, and it gets no equivalent mention. This is the most significant Oscar Will I think we've won. Will he ever get another film finance? Well, the wonderful thing about Jonathan Glazer is he takes, he takes as I say, he's taken ten, between eight and ten years between each of his films. He will get his film next film made because he is 
absolutely recognised for being an auteur and a radical and, ro- and, and really astonishing though, filmmaker. Mark, what he said, but he doesn't want that. He doesn't want funding from the people who are going to hold the purse strings on this kind of stuff. Mm. He's not. Gonna, he's not a Christopher Nolan. You know, he's not. You know, if, if only some of those bigger stars had actually kind of had the guts or the chutzpah to kind of actually go. Because oh, like they're so wealthy. He's. I mean, it's like okay, if you don't get a film for a couple of years, you can afford that. You know. Anyway, so I, it, it, major Don't significance, and the only other thing that we did also want to talk about here, rather than um, rather than in the Oscars chat that we're going to do later, is you were really struck more than necessarily I was by Jimmy Kimmel's um, sort of roasting of Robert Downey Jr. in the opening intro. I really didn't like it regarding Robert Downey Jr.'s addiction. I, did, I just didn't like it. I just think it was unnecessary. What do you all think? Of? Do you uh, uh, Mark was like, "Oh, is that bad?" Because he made a joke about Robert Downey Jr. Uh, he said, oh, this is going to be your highest point, or is it? Like, you know, referring to the fact that, you know, he was he was a, he was a raging addict, wasn't he, Robert Downey Jr.? Went to prison something like three times. Yeah. I don't know how long he's been sober. Anyway, um, you know, Robert Downey Jr. sort of did this for him to, like, pass on. And I thought, well, too bloody right. If I'd been sat with you... Which could have happened last year. Last year, it. don't forget. <laughs> um, uh, and, and somebody had brought up your addiction... On a night like that, because part of his success is his sobriety. So to go back and just reduce him to the addict side, you know, mm. the active addict, I thought it was absolutely disgusting. And it confirms that idea that people are, oh, well, you know, you can never trust an ad, you know, you can never rid yourself, or oh, you'll always just be seen as an alcoholic or as a... And I thought it was, I thought it was... In- Terrible taste. Did anyone else see it? I didn't. I didn't necessarily I think that sorry. Robert Downey Jr. was was cross about he it. He went like that. He went move on. He did. Uh, Jonathan Ross referred to it after off the back of the clip. Yeah. They said it was the only moment that he lost Jimmy Kimmel because otherwise I thought he's. Well, his I, I, I thought he was, was great. great. Yeah, I thought it, it was, was just really good. that. I just thought no, nah. no, nah. because he doesn't. He's talked so much about all of his stuff, mm. and now he doesn't. He's got his kids. He's a philanthropist. Yeah. He helps out so many it was people. A cheap so many shot. charities that I talk to that, that say that he just like quietly does stuff. But, he's a good person and he's got well. And I just think it's not appropriate. But when Kimmel suggested he had something rectangular in his pocket, was he just pleased to see him or did he have an acceptance speech? I, you, I didn't think that that was a suggestion that he had a wrap of cocaine. I thought it was that well, he that had a card I don't, with his speech. Well, on. when you said that, because he's won I, every other award, I thought, oh, maybe that is what he meant. But when because he'd already done the thing. About about his highest point, mm. I thought he was saying, have you got a wrap in your pocket? So I don't right. know. That's how I understood right. it. Yeah. Because of how he'd started off. Yeah, you see, it's funny, isn't it? At first, I didn't really, it didn't really bother me. And then, and then, you know, but then you do have to kind of, in a way, respect Everyone the way in which... Everyone thought it was disgusting. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I mean, I'm surprised at how surprised I am, in a sense, because I suppose you're right. I mean, if I'd been reduced, if you were reduced just yeah, to your addiction... on your big night. But if you're Robert Downey Jr. and you've won every award in Hollywood running up to the Oscars and you're about to win the Oscar, is it but, really... But, Mark, but Mark the thing is, it's like, you've got to understand, people do look up to celebrities, whether mm. you like it or not. Mm. And if there is somebody struggling... Or someone's... And they hear, oh, God, you're never going to get rid of that tag. True, true. What is the yeah. whole thing about sobriety? Yeah. To yeah. get rid of your shame, mm. to speak about all the terrible things you've done, because it's shame and guilt that leads mm. you to pick up a drink or pick mm. up your... Oh, don't get me wrong. Is. I mean, you can be a bigger fan <clears throat> of Robert Downey Jr. than me. I mean, I adore the guy. I His sobriety is something that's sensational. He's got a beautiful sobriety. And the thing is... You want people to be inspired and believe that you can leave that behind you and move on to a better life. And Lee Piet, who is used to this hosting and, and stand-up routine scenario, there are smarter jokes to make other than his past, which is his past. I yeah. think you're right. And, and all th- the other jokes, I liked, I liked, I thought he was funny. He was brilliant about the writer's strike. I, I, I stuff, hate so, yeah. the, I mean, I, I don't like it when what's his name does it. I'm too uncomfortable. Yeah. It's like you're going to be too unpleasant. But it was just, it was just, I actually wanted to stay up and watch the Oscars last night, which I never want to do. So yeah, I didn't. Okay, well, look, I'm just going to show you very briefly something that I just I saw, and I just thought, imagine the cringe uh, that she must have felt after this. Take this drive with me. What are you doing sitting down over there? Uh, what are you doing sitting down? Oh, God. Oh, okay. But she didn't mean politically incorrect. Sorry about that. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, so this is Madonna who on stage thought that someone was making some kind of demonstration. 
protest or committing sort of a demonstration of some form against, against her. her because they were sitting rather than standing. She called them out for not dancing and then discovered that they were in a wheelchair. But again, I don't think people should hammer her for it. We're all, it's all right to make mistakes. Her intention, she would never have gone up to somebody in a wheelchair Do you know what I'd have done, and though? tried to humiliate her. It is, it, the no, 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 person, no, 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 absolutely. The only person that's humiliated was her because it's the classic kind of mistake that any of us could make. Oh, come on, don't be silly, stand up, and then the person can't. I think she should. I think she could have made it even better human. by perhaps going even a bit more human and jumping down and really sort of going off. You know, I don't know. I, I felt. Yeah, but she was dealing with the cringe. I think yeah. dealing with the cringe is just such a, that flood of cortisol and, yeah, and yeah. adrenaline that just makes you go almost blind with thought doesn't it and you're just like no no Absolutely. why can't I keep my bloody mouth shut <laughs> um I just want to read this quote which is a really nice one Donna Little says it didn't going back to the Robert Downey Jr it didn't make Robert less it made Kimmel less mm. yeah it's a shame because I think Jimmy Kimmel did a really good job I think he he, he managed to kind surprised of... that nobody sort of went mm, what do you think nah. yeah, yeah. and finally this is a little clip Nadia do you want to write <coughs> into this or do you want to do you want me to what just uh, your wedding. clip at the wedding that you thought was quite tricky. Oh, well, look at this, because I said to Mark, this will make our lot laugh. Look at this. And then finally. Right, <laughs> Dick liver pate. Dick liver pate. I wonder if she did it on purpose. At least she didn't put dick liquor pate. It'd be quite like a good one, wasn't it, if you'd found out that your fiancé had been, like, unfaithful at something oh. and you let the whole thing go along and then you went, refer back to you. Then you and you've chopped it off and diced it and put it well, into a liver. OK, well, let's Sorry, not go that far, Mark. Let's go a bit too far. Sorry. Anyway, guys, there you go. That's your coffee morning for, for Monday morning. Uh, as we say, an Oscars chit-chat with lots more to be had. We'll be landing later. All of the dresses, all of the moments. John Cena looking naked and all that kind of stuff. May Edmondson thinks she might have done it on purpose. Oh, right, oh, I see that they're all laughing. I knew they'd like that one. Oh. Well, there we you go, guys. You so well. We will see you, see you later. See you on. We're